All right, it's time to look into what's trending in employment law. Lawyer, you're on the clock. So we've got two today that are in the category of completely not a surprise. And then, Phil, I'm going to try to try to throw a, a little curveball at you for for the third topic that I want well, to talk remember, about. Remember, I'm today. a genius now, Bert. So all right, very good, a very good curveball. All right, so the the first one is going to be uh, in the category of not a surprise is that the United States Chamber of Commerce in the last few days has asked a Texas federal court to issue an injunction stopping the Federal Trade Commission's new non-compete rule from going into effect while the litigation challenging that ban ban uh, plays out. And uh, basically they're arguing that the rules enforcement would irreparably harm businesses and their employees. Uh, So you'll remember that uh, the the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission passed a new rule in the last few weeks Mm -hmm. uh, that basically says come September, uh, virtually all existing non-compete agreements will instantly become unenforceable. The Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has said that uh, non-compete agreements could be mutually beneficial because they allow companies to protect their confidential information and employees to obtain specialized training and the potential for greater compensation. So uh, again, last, you know, just in the last few days, last Friday, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the uh, chamber and fellow plaintiff intervenors, uh, the Business Roundtable, the Texas Association of Business and Longview Chamber of Commerce uh, sought to uh, stay the rules effective date, uh, basically looking for a preliminary injunction. And now that's not just for uh, employers in Texas. For correct. Texas, on behalf of the U.S., yeah. Yep, they're 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 looking to, to ban this uh, nationwide, and uh, the suit by the chamber and these other business groups, in essence, claims that the Federal Trade Commission lacked authority to issue regulations barring what the agency believes are unfair methods of competition, and they've argued that Congress never gave the FTC general rulemaking authority and instead limited the commission's authority to writing regulations in specific context. Uh, The complaint also targets the rule's retroactive reach and argues that a categorical categorical ban reflects, quote, an arbitrary and capricious exercise of agency powers. So that's... You guys use those great words all the time, capricious. No one uses that in everyday conversation, (laughs) but great, great stuff there. Keep going, Bert. I'm sorry. The, The next one, that's all right, Phil. The next one, again, in completely not a surprise, is that uh, a coalition of 18 state attorneys general have now sued to block the enforcement of the EEOC's new workplace harassment guidance, claiming it illegally broadens the scope of a federal anti-discrimination law's gender identity protections. So you all Mm. recall, of course, that just in the last couple of weeks, the U.S. EEOC finalized uh, their sweeping uh, guidelines on uh, harassment in the workplace. They finalized those on April 29th. Uh, and basically uh, what, what the court is arguing here, uh, or what the, the plaintiffs are arguing here, is that the Administrative Procedures Act, uh, under that act, the EEOC t- uh, made what's called an end run around uh, their constitutional institutions, Congress, of course, by misusing its authority to eliminate women's private spaces and pushing the use of biologically accurate pronouns at the expense of the state's employers. And so uh, there is uh, uh, plenty, there's there's a lot of litigation on this. They're also asserting that the guidance conflicts with laws enacted by the plaintiff states, including those that require sex segregated facilities in certain workplaces like public schools. Um, so the, you'll recall the EOC's guidance holds that repeated and intentional use of a name or pronoun inconsistent with an individual's known gender identity or denial of an employee's ability to use a bathroom or sex segregated facility consistent with their gender would trigger sex-based harassment claims under Title VII. So that's uh, that's why these states are suing so that people don't uh, get in trouble if they uh, use an individual's birth uh, pronouns 
uh, despite the fact that the individual wants to be called by different pronouns and also right. related to the bathroom. So again, not a surprise that these suits have been filed. And uh, of course, I'll keep you posted on the program here as to what uh, what takes place. Well, those will be two to keep good eyes on. So yes. um, I'm glad you're keeping a watchful eye for us all, Bert. We'll stay tuned for more. All right. All right. So Anything the, else on your agenda today? Yeah. The, the last thing I wanted to throw at you, Phil, is uh, just kind of a reminder to employers out there uh, that, that not all hostile work environments are uh, Title VII uh, violations or uh, ADA or ADEA violations that uh, basically the courts uh, have said here that uh, the laws do not protect a person from everyday indignant, indignities and annoyances of working in an office, and they do not entitle a person to a job opportunity if the person is not the most qualified candidate by far. So why am I chatting about this? Because I found this case to be a little bit interesting. We've got a plaintiff in a case here. This case is on appeal. The defendants in the case, which was the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, won a case against a, uh, ke a chemist uh, who brought a discrimination and hostile work environment and retaliation claim. And what the, the Department of Health and Human Services is arguing in this case is that Grinch, get this, Grinch is not a protected class and federal law does not protect an individual from not being well-liked in the workplace. So I bet you didn't know that, Phil, right, that Grinch... Start over. Say this again, <laughs> Grinch, like the Grinch who stole mm -hmm. Christmas? Exactly. That is not a protected class, Phil. Ah, really? Oh, yes. I'm going to have to change our handbook here at AIM. I tell you, we got Grinch written down. Um, you, you might be surprised. Sometimes people think I might be a Grinch. Uh, well, but yeah, that's, yeah. So we can be Grinches all day long. Um, and but that's not protected. No protection. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, in this case, uh, the the plaintiff accused his employer of giving him negative performance evaluations, removed him from management decisions, significantly reduced his direct reports, changed his position description, imposed what he felt was untenable deadlines, and refused to select him for a position for which he claimed he was the most qualified. And then in one instance in December 2019, a supervisor loudly stated to some other colleagues, there's the Grinch himself. Yeah. And so he's he filed a lawsuit claiming that that was part of the discrimination and hostile work environment he suffered. And uh, they, they, like I said, the, the Department of Health and Human Services won at the trial court level. Uh, this individual is trying to have his claim uh, revived at the Fourth Circuit. And uh, that particular comment about the Grinch was made uh, the week before Christmas while the plaintiff walked into an office in door, oh. adorned with Grinch-themed decor. That's awesome. Uh, yes. So, okay, the Grinch is not a protected class, but what about a who? What about a who? I, that's a good question, Phil. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. Who so might we'll have protected? to see what what the ruling is and where the line uh, where the line gets crossed on protected class. All, All right. right. So quit it and eat your green eggs and ham. Good, good, good stuff. The green. I don't. I mean, what is the world coming to? Right. <laughs> you know, uh, he just needs to listen to the end of the program. We say, let's go out and be good to somebody. You know, <laughs> it's 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 that easy. We don't have to be Grinches. All right. Anything else, Bert? I think that's probably good enough for today, Phil. All right. Fantastic. Uh, there you heard it. The fastest six minutes uh, on the clock. Thanks, Bert. We appreciate that. Thank you once again for tuning in to This Week at Work. If you enjoy the show, please share it with your colleagues. Forward our invites. Share the link aimea.org forward slash This Week at Work or follow or subscribe wherever you get your news and entertainment like LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're everywhere you are. And you can be part of the show. Send your questions and comments anytime to info at thisweek.work. We'll see you next week, 7.30 a.m. Central Time, when we discuss what's happening this week at work. <laughs>